Okay, so in this video, we're continuing blood glucose levels and obesity, key area 2.8. So we've seen the normal regulation of blood glucose. What happens if we can't do this process and diabetes results? Okay. So there are different types of diabetes. So type 1 is the type that normally occurs during childhood. And it's where the pancreatic cells that produce the insulin have been destroyed by the immune system. So a person who has type 1 diabetes is completely unable to make insulin at all, thus requires insulin injections to restore that function. The insulin causing the liver to store the glucose as glycogen. The other type is type 2 diabetes and it's more typical for that to develop later in life and more typical as well if the individual is overweight. Remember, these are just typical profiles. Type 1 diabetes could be diagnosed later in life, and type 2 diagnosed earlier. The other hallmark of type 2 diabetes, so with type 1, they cannot produce insulin at all, but in type 2, even though the insulin is still being produced by the pancreas, the cells are much less sensitive to it. So overproduction over time due to chronically high glucose levels has caused this fatigue, it's insulin resistance. So a decrease in the number of insulin receptors, particularly on the liver. Therefore, the glucose is not uptaken, it's not stored as glycogen, and the levels remain high in the blood, where it could potentially then go on to damage the blood vessels. So both types of diabetes tend to have the same sort of consequences. That's glucose remaining high within the bloodstream and seeing particularly rapid rises following consumption of more glucose from the diet. So the kidney will work quite hard to remove some of this glucose, which is why you see glucose appearing within the urine, which is not normal. This normally shouldn't be the case. So if urine is containing glucose, it's used as an indicator of diabetes. So a positive urine test for glucose will lead to somebody going on to have a glucose tolerance test. And this is how you diagnose or confirm the diabetes state. So the way this works is individuals are told to fast for a period of time. So when they come in, they have their initial blood glucose levels measured after that fasting period. So we've got that base level. Then they drink a known glucose solution. So we track the changes in blood glucose concentration for at least the next two hours or so. so some things that you would notice and be looking out for in a diabetic to diagnose the condition. So one, the blood glucose concentration and the disease state will always be higher than that of a non-diabetic. Also, during the test, the diabetic's blood glucose concentration will increase much faster to much higher levels than that of the non-diabetic. And it will also take that much longer to return to its starting concentration, indeed, if it ever does. So it's after the glucose tolerance test. If you see these telltale signs, you would confirm the diagnosis. Uh, so let's try some past paper questions. Here's one comparing the two types. So pause the video and write down a response. So your question is to describe the role of insulin in the development of type 1 and type 2. To diabetes. So what's different about how the body uses insulin in the different types of diabetes? So type 1 is where the insulin is not produced at all, so blood glucose concentration cannot be controlled. And then in type 2, insulin is produced, but the cells are less sensitive to insulin or have fewer insulin receptors or have developed insulin resistance. So you need to make that connection between whether insulin is produced or not, or if 
that insulin can be utilised. So one mark for each. Okay. Uh, let's try another one. We've got a graph involved. So pause the video and answer the questions on screen. So we've got a graph that shows the changes in blood glucose concentration in a diabetic and a non-diabetic after each is consumed a glucose drink. Okay. So remember, first thing with graph questions, that's right, familiarise yourself with the key, with what it shows, and then tackle the specifics. Okay. So we've got the time in minutes. So zero is when the glucose drink was consumed. This one individual A is, and this one individual B. Here's the value for blood glucose concentration in millimole per litre. So what happens to the concentration of glucose over time in the two individuals? And this dotted line is your normal blood glucose concentration, what you want to maintain it at, okay? So you were given the option to choose one of the individuals, either A or B, and indicate whether they were diabetic or non-diabetic. So it doesn't matter which one you pick, as long as you correctly identify and, more importantly, justify from the evidence. Uh, so let's start with individual A. If you went for this option, well, A is the diabetic. And the justification is because either the blood glucose concentration increased faster or to a higher level or for a longer time, or because the blood glucose concentration does not return to normal. For individual B, so that's the non-diabetic, and your justification is because the blood glucose increases slower to a lower level for a shorter time, so the opposite, or because the blood glucose concentration does return to normal. Okay. So the mark for this question was awarded for the justification based on what you saw within the graph. If you do have any further questions, you can always let me know.